Hello, welcome back to another Bevy Basics video. In this video, I'm gonna be going over timers. I feel like doing a throwback to my old video format. This is basically breaking the videos down into three segments. One section that is like the theory behind the thing, so all things timers and where you'd use them in the industry, independent of Bevy itself. The next segment will be how Bevy implements its form of timers and the structure that you can use to get access to timers built by Bevy. And finally, a third section that will be how you would use timers in your actual Bevy application and some concrete examples of where you might use timers in your Bevy games. This video focuses on timers as an internal component and not as the fancy clocks that you would show to the player in order to give them a sense of urgency. That sort of timers can be constructed using the timers I'm talking about in this video, but I'm not gonna be focusing on the displaying something to the screen in order for the player to get feedback on what's happening under the hood in your game. A lot of game mechanics don't actually need timers, or at least don't require the programmer to directly manipulate and interact with the timer. Things like moving a certain amount per frame that's dependent on the amount of time that that frame took. This is usually done with Game Engine's Delta and things like that, which if you'd like to learn more about Delta Time, you can find more details in my Bevy Basics Time video. But where time has come into things is when you need to keep track of something happening over multiple frames or over a fixed period of time. Depending on the type of game you are creating, this could be a number of frames, an amount of real time elapsed, or in certain specific games, the actual turn timer taking place. All of these things are what I am calling timer, though Bevy only really has an implementation for the real time variant as a pre-built struct. Here are some vastly different but broad examples of where you might use timers. So you've got physics timers. These are your fixed step time, which makes the physics simulation more stable. So rather than being dependent on the number of frames that have passed, it is a physical incrementation of say 0.1 seconds every time the physics engine runs. And this means that if it takes four or five frames for that 0.1 seconds to increment, you don't run your physics engine for those frames and then you'll run it on one frame and then you won't run it for a few frames again. A slight variation of that is to apply logic after a specific set amount of time. This could be things like making the player unable to jump or only recharging the double jump if they've been in contact with the ground for at least a certain amount of time. Or you could allow their jump power to be proportional to the amount of time they've spent on the ground. And another and the more common use I find for timers, which is to create certain effects such as a timer that will turn lights on and off after a certain period of time or increment animations in an animation system. As you can see, timers are quite a broad and vast topic, but since Bevy only has one type of timer built in, I'll be focusing on that timer from here on out. But do remember that it only takes slight modifications to change that particular timer into any of the other types of timers that I've been talking about. Though you'd probably consider these more to be counters than timers if you're using something like frame time or term count since they used fixed integers and just simply count. So how does Bevy implement timers? Well, first I'm going to have to stop and introduce a new term here, and that's the stopwatch. Although not necessary, Bevy does make a distinction between whether the timer counts forward, calling these stopwatches, or whether the timer counts backwards, calling these timers. Starting with the simpler of the two structs, you have the stopwatch. You can't get much simpler than this. It's just a duration and a paused boolean. The way the stopwatch works is every time you increment the timer, it will simply add the time onto its elapsed time, unless the timer is paused. We needed to cover the stopwatch first, since the timer is quite a bit more complicated, so much so that it actually uses a stopwatch as part of its internal logic. In the case of the timer, it has the stopwatch, which represents how much time has elapsed, as well as keep track of the pause and unpause state of the timer. On top of that, it also has a duration, which indicates how long the timer will last before it finishes, it also has a mode that tells the timer whether it only finishes once or whether it should repeat after finishing. In older versions of Bevy, this was simply a boolean, but was changed for the sake of clarity. Since it is more readable to say that a timer is a once off timer, rather than saying it is a false repeating timer. By default, timers are set to the run once mode. The final two parts of the timer is the finished boolean and the times finished this tick, U32. The times finish this tick is used to determine if the timer has just finished, or if it's a repeating timer, how many times it has finished with the last tick you provided. And the finish boolean is set when the elapsed time is greater than the target time. On a repeating timer, the finished boolean will be reset when the next tick is called, unless the time has been elapsed again. And the times finish this 
tick U32 is used to report back if the timer has just finished or not, since this value will be set to one when it just finishes on a once off repeating timer, whereas the finished will remain set even after the just finished window has closed. So the times finished this tick will be set to zero while the timer is still considered finished. This is done in such a way to cut down on the redundant use of memory. The way that the tick method works inside the timer is quite straightforward, although significantly more complicated than that of the stopwatch and can be a little bit difficult to interpret the first time around. The first thing the timer does is check to see if it's paused. If it is, it simply resets the just finished state and returns early since there is nothing to do if the timer is paused. If the timer is not paused, but it is set to once mode and has finished, it also resets the just finished condition and returns early. Now we get to the point where we actually update the timer. This is done by calling tick on the stopwatch. We then calculate if the timer has finished by comparing the stopwatch time to the target time. If the timer has not yet finished, we reset the finish times and return early. If however, the timer has completed at least a single run, it checks to see if its mode is once or repeating. If it is once, it will set its completed target to one and then will clear the elapsed time back to its target time as to prevent it from being past 100% complete. If however the timer is on repeating, it will calculate the number of times it would have completed and sets that as the number of times finished before putting the remainder time back into the elapsed position. As you can see, it is not too complicated when placed in a flowchart to understand how the tick timing works, though a little bit hard to read the code. In order to make timers easier to interact with, Bevy provides a bunch of helper methods to make it easy to interact with timers, but also maintain the safety of not allowing incorrect states to be set. Starting again with the stopwatch, since it is such a simple struct, it doesn't have that many helper methods. Simply a new method, which takes no arguments, a pause and unpause method, as well as a set and get elapsed time. There is also a ticks and reset method, these methods are very easy to understand and more or less boil down to giving you access to the underlying data to manipulate it in a safe way. Onto the timer, obviously with its added functionality and complexity comes a whole bunch more helper functions to get access to everything. So now the new method also requires you to specify a duration and the type of the timer. There is also a variant called from seconds that lets you specify an F32 rather than a duration in this method. There is also a bunch of methods to get access to underlying data, such as the finished, just finished, elapsed, set elapsed, elapsed seconds, duration, set duration, mode, set mode, pause, unpause, and times finish this tick. All these methods are simply just accesses to the underlying data. Although there are also some math functions that are provided, such as percent and percent left, which will tell you on a value of zero to one how long the timer has left, and a remaining and remaining seconds, which will convert this percentage into the remaining time based on the duration of the timer. These basically give you different ways to interpret and understand the data left inside the timer. Finally, there is the tick method, which we covered earlier. It takes in a duration to add onto the timer and provides all that complicated logic in order to tick the timer forward. With all these functions, it is possible to make a range of different systems and functionality for your game. Though an important thing to note is that Bevy does not make the timer or the stopwatch an actual component since they are not intended to be used on their own directly attached entities. Instead, timers are intended to be used as an internal part of a larger structs that you will then attach to your entity. The primary reason for doing this is that you may need multiple timers in order to achieve desired effects or have multiple effects that would need access to the timer. So having the timer as a component would make this unnecessary since you could just use the resource time if you were tracking time and needed to calculate offsets respective to the system that was using them. For more concrete examples, you can take a look at my Making a Platformer series. In this series, I use timers to make an animation system that allows you to update player's sprite at a different frame rate depending on the animation. It is independent of the frame rate of the game. I also use timers to create a system to spawn ghosts a set time after the player leaves the spawn location. So hopefully all this information on timers will give you the ability to make whatever system you need for your game. If you have any questions, do feel free to ask them in the description and I would love to hear what game mechanics you intend to implement with your newfound knowledge on timers and stopwatches. If you found this video helpful in any way or informative, please don't forget to share this video with all your game dev friends. 
and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. If you would like to help support the channel, you can always head over to my Patreon or simply watch other videos on my channel since all watch time helps contribute to the YouTube algorithm. I would like to thank my Sneaky Beaky patrons for their support and they will find their names hidden somewhere in this video. And until next time, happy coding.